Uh, the one I'm going to do first is a floating, uh, floating epoxy minnow. You guys have probably seen a few versions of this uh, around before. Um, I do this one on a really thin wire diver hook actually, uh, if you can see that one here. It's, uh, it's got a nice wide gap, uh, super, super sharp. Uh, this particular model is actually no longer in production, but it was made in the, in the same factory as the Daiichi hooks. So very, very sharp, very, very good hook. Um, and not very expensive, thankfully. Um, so what I'm going to do first is uh, get the foam ready for this fly. And to do that, I just take my block and punch a hole through the middle of it. Okay. And it will go on the hook like this. You do your zap a gap trip trick, you know, squeeze it together. What I normally do is take a clamp, you know, I'll clamp it together, glue it, let it sit. But, uh, you know, for the magic of TV, I had one ready. We'll trim that. It's two mil, two mil sheet foam. You can use three. I did one with three just the other day. Um, it's it's pretty tight to get the mylar body around uh, around the edge of it, if you do. Um, just do a general trim down to a minnow shape. Keep the, uh, the shoulders uh, fairly smooth if you can. If you do it too sharp, I find when I put the epoxy on later, uh, you'll get weird bumps and stuff like that. The epoxy, you know, will really highlight any unsmooth edges on the... Uh, uh, any uh, sharper edges on the on the fly. And with this hook, because it's uh, uh, it bends down fairly sharply, you need to trim that foam a little higher up, just so you can get your marabou tail to sit properly on there. If you guys have any questions, just shout out as I go. Use this in river or lakes? Uh, almost exclusively in lakes. But I, there's no reason why it wouldn't work well in a river. I mean, put it on a sink tip and, and it should be just fine. It'll, you know, float and hover up there. Uh, if you go with a heavier hook, I have tied these on, um, on heavier hooks and it ends up not floating so well. It's almost more neutral. Um, it will do a very slow sink with, uh, uh, with a sink line. So I do, uh, for most of these, I'll do two colors of marabou in the tail. And I'll do, for this one, white with olive on top. I'm looking for long straight ones, straight fibers, as opposed to, you know, some of this stuff is rather, rather uh, dense and fluffy. I'd rather have the long straight ones like that. I usually tie the darker one just slightly longer, like a fraction of an inch longer than the, than the bottom one. It just gives that uh, a little bit better of an illusion of a taper. And you can be pretty, uh, pretty rough with your thread here. Um, all this is going to be covered up by the mylar body. So any mistakes you make here are totally fine. Sort of wind that forward really loosely over the body. You want to keep, keep that foam as expanded as possible. You crunch it down with thread. It's just not going to float as well. And this is the time where I like to uh, float Sharpies and do my coloring 
I found by um, a lot of times a, an epoxy minute will be done and colored afterward uh, over top the mylar body. But if I do this with the markers now, you'll see after I put on the epoxy that it will bleed through the pearl mylar tubing and give it a really, um, a really good kind of shimmering look. So I'm just going to do, I do green on the top, um, I do a little bit of purple on the edges, purple or pink. Just a few little black dots. I've had too much coffee this afternoon. Shaky hands. And almost all of my minnows have some red or orange on it. Uh, in some shape or another, you'll see as I do the rest of these today. So I usually do red or orange right near the front for the gill slashes. And, uh, you know, a couple people have told me that red or orange is a really good trigger for most, uh, most fish. All right. Are we clear on that so far? It looks all right. So, next I'll put the pearl mylar tubing on. This is a, this is a uh, medium one. And actually, before I put it on, I kind of like to loosen it up a bit. Just sort of stretch it around with your uh, fingers, move it back and forth, and just, it loosens the weave of the mylar in there, and it helps it to expand and push itself back over top of this foam. So then you just go over top the eye, pinch it with your fingers, do a loose wrap or two and then cinch it down tight and you want this to be right behind the eye of the hook. If you don't do it right behind the eye of the hook, you end up having um, too much space uh, between the eye of the hook and uh, once this folds over you have a gap. You know, uh, it's not going to hurt the fly, it's just not going to make it look quite as nice. Um, so loosen that up again and if you need to, as you push this. So it's actually going to like invert over itself as it goes back. I don't know if that's going to show how well that will show up. But if you just push and slide, so you can see it's halfway, halfway over top there. Keep going. And I can see right now that I've used way too much. And if you use too much, you're going to get to the end and you're going to have to deal with all that excess and then trim it to get it down around the, uh, the bend of the hook. So better to uh, cut now. I didn't wind my thread back. Okay, so that just expands, goes all the way to the back, and that was just the right amount. Okay, so we kind of grab all those loose pieces, pull them back as much as you can, gather them up, and do a couple really tight wraps. I'm using uh, 3 aught uh, white super thread on this, and I like 3 aught thread for almost all my streamers. It's really, really strong, and the diameter is nice and thin. Uh, this 3 aught uh, thread is actually closer to it in a diameter to a 6, but uh, it's got far better tensile strength. And I'm going to leave, that was actually kind of a nice, nice amount, I'm going to leave these frayed bits at the end, just for an extra flash on the tail, and actually having those there, because it's a stiff fiber, when you strip it through the water, it's going to give it that shimmy, it's going to have it kick off to the side. I've tested some with, uh, with less, you know, um, if I trim it down to maybe an eighth of an inch, and it doesn't quite catch the water and make it, make it move as well, so. Okay. So, actually, the tying part is actually almost entirely done. I'm just going to finish it off at the back. And sometimes, I, uh, depending on what color I'm going for, I'll color the thread before I do this. Because um, I've tied these in larger sizes, um, and if there's a place where there's spot tail shiners, I'll color the thread black, wind it on so that this, this thread wrap here at the back will be a big uh, black or, or even a red dot sometimes. Any questions about the mylar going over so far? Pretty straightforward. And I'm going to use chartreuse tape eyes uh, for these. All bait fish patterns put an eye on them. Um, they look really great, and uh, 
I, I definitely think as big an eye as you can get away with without it being really, really ridiculous. The reason I like these chartreuse tape eyes is <coughs> they really pop under the UV light. Um, you know, whether you believe in UV or not, um, you know, I definitely think a little bit of uh, reflectiveness uh, at depth is a good idea. The, um, the Mirage colored tape eyes also do that. Uh, silver and red don't, don't really reflect, they actually get pretty dull. But the Chartreuse and Mirage are really great for that. Well, now we're going to get messy with arts and crafts time. This is the Solar Res Thin. Um, I don't know why they call it thin, it's actually a pretty thick formula in my opinion. But uh, I find this one really, really easy to work with. And it was given to me, so I didn't have to pay for it. It was nice and cheap. So you can see, almost right away, as I put that on there, can you guys see those colors bleeding through? The dots coming through on there? And the green that comes through on the back is very, very similar to just about any minnow you're seeing in the water. It'll look even better once I hit it with the light. Make sure to get that, uh, that thread wrap at the back. And a rotary vise is definitely handy for this, just to be able to move it around and not get too many deformities on this. And then you can hit this with the light pretty much at any time, harden it up. I can see right away a couple spots where I need to, you know, move that, um, you know, get some more epoxy in there, fill in some gaps, make it look pretty. Solarese has, they sell their own light. They do. Is it different from other lights? Um, so the Solarese light that I got with this, uh, with this bottle and the two other bottles I bought was a uh, multi-lens, uh, you know, multi-beam light. It had all sorts of, I think, 30 LEDs at the, at the end. And I didn't really like it. It, uh, it didn't seem to, to harden the UV, the res, as well as I would like. Um, and I've just sort of played around with a few, um, a few different lights, and found that this Loon light with the with the Solar Res is the best combo. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I'm I've you know read a few things and sort of come to the conclusion that uh, most of these most of these resin formulas are pretty close, um, and if you really want you know the best uh, the best drying results it's usually it's usually in the light and how much power it puts out well, I think the moon light is cheaper than the solar east, isn't it? it you know what it was so long ago uh, that I'm really not too sure what uh, what it was worth I got the loon light at wholesale sports in a set with three resins or something like that so yeah, that's looking a little better he's got a little bit of a a little bit of a dip in his back, but I can fix that. So those spots coming through pretty clear. You can see they, they bleed through really nicely. It's not nearly the same as if you put it, put the resin uh, put the, the Sharpie marker on uh, afterwards. A lot of times uh, you'll put it on and the resin, will, it'll bleed. Your colors will bleed together and sometimes you can get some really nice combinations doing it that way. But I really like the look of it coming through on this one. I'm just going to touch up this one on the back a little bit more. And those were at two dollars a piece. What's that? The fly. The fly? Oh, I don't think they're in commercial production. <laughs> we sell we sell some epoxy minnows, but uh, I'll say they're not as nice as this one. <laughs> Does it work? This one works. Yeah, I made I made. Uh, well, I got. I was supposed to fish with uh, with Colin from the from the new fly fisher in Manitoba that week, but he couldn't make it, and uh, he had commission, commissioned me to make him two dozen of these things for the <laughs> for the trip. So uh, I had to, I had to send them back home to him with his cameraman instead. So that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, really. Size Sorry. What size hook? It's a size six. 
a really short shank. Um, it's actually closer to the length of most standard size 8 streamers, streamer hooks. But uh, really great, really durable. Um, you know, especially when you cover the eyes. You know, that's kind of where you need to spend most of your time is just getting that, that eye sealed on there nicely. That thing will come off first if you, if you miss a spot. Uh, you know, a trout tooth in there will, will make short work of it. But really, really durable. Um, you'll, probably, you'll probably break a fish off before you, uh, you know, start damaging this thing. It's pretty solid. Um, it's yeah. really useful then for stripping a minnow in the, in, right in the shallows. Yeah, really. I fish this usually on a hover line um, or a midge tip. And you can fish, um, you can fish one to two feet of water really easily. Um, quite often, I'll fish it um, in front of a regular epoxy minnow, and just get that bit of a washing line technique in shallow water. I mean, fish it in. Well, I mean, I've even fished it on the surface just by itself. You know, you can even you know walk the dog, and if fish are really you know busting up bait in shallow, it's it's a it's a pretty fun fly to fish. I mean, in, in Manitoba, uh, I had a ball fishing this a couple of years ago, just getting it as close to the pencil reeds as I could, and stripping it back as quickly as I could while keeping it on the top. A really short leader, probably about three feet long, and that's it. And uh, it was a blast. Um, you can change the, the base color on this really easily just by using a different color foam. This was white foam underneath. I don't know how well this one will show up. I think I over sharpied it. But this one was done with yellow underneath. I did over sharpie it, but you can see the yellow uh, up on the edges and stuff. This was the one I did with three millimeter uh, foam this morning, and it's a quite a chubby little minnow. But uh, you know, definitely a fish catcher. I've I've made these for people in um, uh, to look like smallmouth bass uh, fry. You know, just with the the bar marks and then the hash marks along with a yellow a yellow background.